excited to share tonight um, a really, really dear friend of mine, and she has literally been an angel to our family, um, the one and only Dr. Michelle Massa from Jupiter, Florida. And she has her own uh, wellness clinic and has just been able to serve so many patients down there, including my husband. And the reason why I do this and bring people on like Michelle is because I watched my husband suffer horribly for six years. And I watched um, as, as all that time sitting in clinics and doctor's offices, I, I, he wasn't the only one. There's a lot of people struggling with a lot of things that they are trying to everything that they're being told and they're still not getting better. And so tonight is a really hot topic because it's on autoimmune. And so I'm so excited to talk about this hot topic because so many people have them. And so I'm going to bring on Dr. Michelle. Michelle, can you just share with us what is this autoimmune thing that we're hearing over and over again now? So autoimmune disease, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about specifics, but it really is an epidemic right now. You know, it, it, autoimmune disease has always been around, but it hasn't been as rampant as it is right now. And we're seeing so much of it. So obviously there's some environmental things that are attached to autoimmune disease, which is why we're seeing it so much because obviously our environment isn't what it used to be. And um, we're being bombarded every day, you know, with toxins and different things that we're putting on our bodies. So before I even get into the autoimmune part of it, I think it's important to understand what the immune system is, right? So the easiest way to put it is to, as a, a perfect analogy is an army, right? So it's our internal army that protects us from foreign invaders. Things like pathogens, like bacteria and viruses and parasites and toxins. Our immune system is there to support us and to protect us from these things that come into our body. Um, what happens is with autoimmune disease is when your immune system gets confused, and is, has become so hyperactive to try to you know, save you from all these things that you're being bombarded with, that it actually gets confused by something we call molecular mimicry, where some of these pathogens actually mimic our normal cells. And so when the immune system is gone away and is attacking everything, it starts to attack our own healthy cells. And so that's where autoimmune disease stems from. And what it, what it actually means, auto meaning, self and immunity, meaning immune system. So immune system attacking your own body, your own organs, your own cells. Um, there are over greater than 80 autoimmune diseases out there. I'm sure some of you have heard of the more common ones, things like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, you know, lupus, multiple sclerosis, Hashimoto's, Graves, psoriasis, I said psoriasis, celiac, um, inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis and, and Crohn's, the list goes on and on. And there's even autoimmune diseases that are, don't even have a name yet. So wow. I mean, literally the list goes on and on. It's because of the symptoms are so similar, yet each autoimmune, so each autoimmune disease has its own set of symptoms that are specific, but also the underlying symptoms are very similar when you get, when you look at all the, the list of autoimmune diseases. Wow, so it's crazy to think that this is an epidemic and I know myself, I'm hearing so many people now. It's a word that we're just hearing over and over and over again. And that's why I love serving others and sharing this information. So, Michelle, can you talk to us a little bit about what does an, a normal immune system look like? What does that look like? What, what should we, how should our bodies be responding? So usually if something comes into your body, right? Like you say you, you eat something that's, you know, food poisoning, for instance. So you're, you eat something bad, your body will look at it and say, oh, that's an attack. You know, it's like it calls in all these signals because it realizes there's an attack going on. So the army comes in and attacks, gets rid of it, and you go on your, about your day and everything's fine. You, you might get a little fever. You know, the normal immune system is there to protect you. So if you get a cold, you get a, a fever, then, you know, you have the cold for a few days. The fevers last for a few days, but the fever is there to protect you. It's there because heat kills viruses and, and you know, bacteria and things like that. So that's a normal response. People freak out when they see fever. They're like, oh my gosh, I have a fever. I got to take something, you know? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let your body, that's your body's natural response. It's supposed to happen. It's there to protect you. I mean, there's, 
individual cases where you may need to give something like if the fever is really super high, but that's, I'm talking like 105, you know, high range, that type of fever. Right, right. Or 102, 103, you can pretty much allow your body to, you know, allow nature to take its course. Um, but, you know, I, I do want to mention some of that. That's what a normal re response would look like. An abnormal response would be, you know, you eat, for instance, something you've been eating your whole life, you know, and you've never had a problem with it. So just to give you an example, I don't know, uh, gluten, for instance, which is a common one that we right. see. Right. And you've never had a problem. You've eaten bread your whole life. And then all of a sudden, bam, you start to like fatigue and, and brain fog and bloating and gas or whatever your symptoms may be. And you never think, oh, it's my food because you've been eating it for so long. Right. So and we, I see this a lot in, in older in older people because, you know, the bread from back in the day didn't have all the glyphosates that are sprayed on it now like it is today right? right the resources right. were a lot different the the um soil was a lot different back then so things were grown a lot differently and now we're seeing this like over production of things so things are getting sprayed to increase shelf life and this is where all this and we'll get to the the leaky gut factor obviously where that's tied into and why that happens but i want to make sure i mention some of the common symptoms of right. immune disease because you know, some people may not even realize that their symptoms actually may be an underlying, you know, a uh, trigger for autoimmune or possibly lead them in that direction and they can do something about it. So some of the common things that you'll hear with autoimmune disease are fatigue, which is a big one. Uh, and, and women tend to kind of be like, oh, it's, I'm just tired. It's my, you know, I'm, cause we as women, we're busy. On, yeah. <laughs> well, we take on a lot, you right. know, I think that we're just created that way to be able to multitask and like, you know, have babies and work and, and keep up the home and do all these things. And then we think, oh, we're just tired because, you know, we're busy, but joint pain is a big one. Um, skin rashes or changes in the texture of your skin whether you know it just becomes very dry or you're seeing more wrinkles on your face or you're getting rashes on your cheeks or you know or skin rashes on your actual skin like dry patches um things like abdominal pain and digestive issues uh recurring fevers you know low grade fevers usually is what you'll see uh swollen glands just like random swollen glands waking weight loss brain fog focus issues depression, anxiety, I mean, the list goes on and on. And Michelle, so you just described the average American. <laughs> exactly. When you think, when you hear those symptoms, you think, oh, that's, you know, that could be everything, basically. So, not funny. I'm not laughing. I'm just saying no, it's it's reality. True. It is true. It's, reality. it's totally true. So, so tell us about what does gut health have to do with autoimmune? Okay. So I get this question a lot, actually, from patients. Um, in functional medicine, we're trained on the triad of autoimmune disease. So what that triad, triad includes is three things, obviously, because it's a triad. So number one is your genetics, obviously, if you're predisposed, you know, to a specific autoimmune disease or to autoimmune disease in general. Um, if you have a family member with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or whatever, that obviously puts you at a higher risk. There is a genetic component to it. However, as we know, genetic predispositions don't mean that you're gonna get that, right? It just means that you've got a higher risk for it. So what can you do preventative wise to keep those switches from getting turned on, right? So that's number one, genetic predispositions. Number two is environmental triggers. So things like environmental toxins, things like heavy metals, things like plastics, BPA, you know, um, medications are a big one. Uh, underlying infections like uh, bacteria, parasites, viruses, yeast, the list goes on and on. So those would be your environmental triggers, right? Um, and then the third one, which was actually added by Dr. Fasano, who's a Harvard clinician and um, researcher. He's a GI specialist and he found leaky gut to be one of the most common things that you see in all autoimmune disease. Wow. That's where we'll kind of go into the microbiome right there, right? So your, as we know, your gut microbiome houses about 300 trillion bacteria and over 3 million genes, which is actually bacterial genes, right? 
that's 150 times more genes than our human genes. So we're, we're big bacteria is walking around, right? So gross. Yeah, I know. 80% <laughs> of your immune system is in your gut. So obviously you want to be able to support and nurture your microbiome. Did you say 80%? 80% of your immune system. Wow. And wow. so you obviously want to nurture your microbiome and you want to get all those good bacteria flourishing right. because that's going to protect you from going into this autoimmunity tract, right? And also it's important to mention that if you don't have a healthy microbiome, then it's going to be really hard to have a healthy immune system. So it's important to know that autoimmune disease obviously relates to the gut in so many ways because it's one of the biggest influences on it on your immune system. So, right, um, right, right. So I know we have tons of people joining from all over. So we, first of all, I just want to say hi to everyone joining us live. And so Michelle, you've just really shed some, some interesting light that, you know, hopefully somebody out here is listening to this and going, gosh, I, I have a lot of these symptoms. I'm already, already having like, or suddenly having sensitivities to foods that I never did before, or they're wondering maybe that is what's causing some of this, right? The sensitivity that they, foods they were always eating and now they have this gas baby and they feel bloated or they feel, you know, like they can't, you know, function. Inflammation, such a big thing. So mm -hmm. I want to mention kind of like what leaky gut is so people can understand it yeah. just from a layman's perspective. So the easiest way to, to, to understand leaky gut and what it is, because I just feel like it's one of those like, you know, terms that people are like, oh, whatever, leaky gut, right? So when you look at your intestines, which is a tube, right? It's a mm -hmm. long tube. It's, if I were to pull your intestines out of your stomach and stretch it out, it's two tennis courts long. And that's what houses the microbiome, which is this collection of bacteria and bacterial genes, right? Mm -hmm. So leaky gut basically is when, when you look at the cells of the, of, the, of the lining of the gut, it's like a brick and mortar and it goes all the way around, right? The, the lining of the gut. And so when you start to lose that mortar in between those bricks, okay, you start to develop what we call leaky gut. So things like overgrowth of yeast or bacteria, the things like that can actually punch holes in that mortar. So now things will go outside of the gut lining and eventually go into the bloodstream, which then causes your immune system to attack, thinking it's an invader. Now, what happens is when the immune system begins to attack, you know, you get bigger things going through and bigger things, and then the immune system goes bananas and starts to attack everything, which is where this autoimmunity comes to play because it loses control and it doesn't fire well. And it, it's like when you start to lose your accuracy and your precision, when you, when you start to get all these things happening, so it actually right. starts to attack your own cells, which is that autoimmune factor. Now, what happens is you get this inflammation, which then will start to attack your whole body. So inflammation is kind of that, that, you know, foundation of autoimmune, autoimmune disease. You know, it's like chronic inflammation, which is why you get joint pain, skin rashes, fatigue, you know, and you don't have to have a digestive symptom to have leaky gut. Because again, everyone will present differently depending on their genetic makeup. So right. one person may get fatigued, another person may get like horrible joint pains, you know, somebody else may get a skin rash. It's very, very patient specific and individual because we're not all the same. We're biologically unique. And I think that's something that's very important for people to understand. You do not have to have a digestive right. symptom, which I think is new. We're not, we were not taught that. We didn't know that even right. just a few years ago. So is it true that if you don't have a healthy gut, yes, you don't have a healthy immune system? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So there's a time and place for meds. Obviously you're, you know, a family doctor, you're, you're a medical doctor, but tell us about what are you recommending to your patients and what have you found in this journey of autoimmune disease? Well, I do, you know, I, I do want to mention because I'm not anti-drugs, like you say, I, I think that there's a time and place for a medication. And Correct. if it's something that we need to use to like help, you know, get the inflammation down while we're working on fixing the, the main cause or the root cause, or if we need to treat somebody while we're, you know, doing all these, you know, testing and things to find the answers, 
you know, I, I, I do use medication sometimes. I try to avoid them if I don't need them. But if it's a serious situation, I'm not going to say, oh, just wait, we'll figure it out, right? Right. But I want to mention that, you know, leaky gut, actually the, the five common causes of leaky gut are due to medications. And the, the most common medications are antibiotics. And the reason why antibiotics are a problem is because when you look at the microbiome, I think of the microbiome as a rainforest, this beautiful mm. rainforest of beautiful plants and flowers and everything works symbiotically to grow. Now, what happens when you have an attack of something and it overtakes all this great, beautiful flowers, you know, all the bad stuff, the weeds start to come through and, and takes over, right? So that's what happens with antibiotics. Antibiotics will kill everything. Wow. So it won't just kill your good floor. It it'll, won't just kill the bad stuff. It'll kill all your good stuff. So now you're left with this, you know, overgrowth of yeast, candida, which is a common thing that can poke those holes in that mortar. Okay. Interesting. So that's overgrowth of yeast. Steroids is the second one. So steroids, is something we use common for people with inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. We try to stop inflammation. Well, inflammation is there to protect us but it's when there's chronic inflammation that we end up with problems. And steroids do the same thing. They, they cause this overgrowth of yeast, okay? Uh, the other thing is NSAIDs, things like Aleve and Advil, um, anti-inflammatories. So again, it go, takes us back to, like, we're trying to stop the process that's actually trying to help us. Right. And we tell people, oh, just take, you know, just take Aleve or just take Advil. And that's all we tell them in the conventional world. Instead of saying, you know what? Take a leave in Advil for now. Let's figure out why you have all this inflammation, and then you won't need those medications. Right. So, and the other thing is acid reducing drugs and birth control pills. And these are the most common medications you see people taking every day, right? right. I mean, these are like the normal list. I mean, our young girls that are on, are on, on uh, oral contraceptive pills, you know, birth control. Um, all, I, everybody that I test for candida that is on a birth control has a positive candida test. And it's wow. because we're allowing to grow. We're killing all the good stuff. Michelle, I just love doing this with you because I, I mean, I learn every time I'm with you and this is so important because we're not educating people. Right. And if we educate, again, we can use these things when we need to, but we must repair and we must replenish. So tell us about what you are recommending in your clinic. I mean, Tell us what you're doing to help all these patients. So I have a, I have a program that I follow um, that obviously I've learned in my training. It's called the 4R program. So the 4R program is actually a gut restoration program. And I do this with every single one of my patients because most of the stuff that I'm seeing are the typical symptoms that we discussed earlier, right? Fatigue, hormone, all this, everything that you see on a common daily basis. Um, and now we're, we know that the microbiome is tied to literally every single chronic disease. So it's an easy way to get people started while I'm testing them for things, right? So it's called the 4R program and it, it's got, the first R is remove. So removing triggers, I actually will put them on a dietary program. Um, I'll start them on a cleanse. I usually use a reboot, which, I, which you can discuss later. Um, but it's basically removing triggers like inflammatory foods, things like gluten, dairy, corn, soy, sugar, alcohol, caffeine, eggs, you know, the list goes on and on. Or I'll put them on an elimination diet where I eliminate the most common allergens and I give them a specific diet to follow that is filled with microbiome foods, tons of greens and earthly foods that, that are clean and organic and, you know, kind of transition them into this healthy eating, you know, because it literally will change their palate, but right. at the same time, it's going to make them feel better so that they're able to complete the program. The second thing is to replace. So replacing, which I just said, adding the good foods, adding the healthy foods, the clean foods, the organic foods, the things that are going to help feed those good bacteria that are in the gut. Um, and also adding digestive enzymes because it's so important of the absorption part of it. You know, if you don't absorb well or you don't break down your food well, then you're not going to get the benefits from those foods. Because again, you are what you absorb. You're not, it's not you are what you eat. So the digestive enzymes helped in that process of breaking down foods and making sure that that improves absorption. Um, 
Reinoculation is the third one, which is basically reinoculating the gut with the good probiotics and the good prebiotics. The probiotics you're gonna get, but the prebiotics are gonna be the food that feeds those probiotics so that they can flourish and become you know, greater and kind of bring down those bad ones, right? Because we wanna starve the bad ones. They need to be there. I mean, they're there to protect us too, but they shouldn't be overpowering your good bacteria. And so it, the importance of getting a good pre and probiotic is key. Um, and making sure that the prebiotic is the correct food for the probiotic, because if they don't match up, then you're not gonna get that benefit of it flourishing because you're not feeding it, right? And right. then obviously the healthy foods that we eat help to flourish our good bacteria that are already in our gut. And the last thing is to repair. So repairing the gut lining, you know, which, which takes a lot of stuff. It takes decreasing inflammation, changing the diet, and, and helping to restore the nutrients, you know, in, in the gut to help, to help improve that gut lining. So things like zinc carnosine, things like butyrate, things like L-glutamine, uh, DGL, which is a diglyceride licorice, uh, marshmallow root extract. I mean, tons of, there's tons of Ayurvedic and Asian herbs that can help as well. Um, with like pine, pine bark leaf extract, ginger, you know, tons of things that can help heal that gut lining. Um, we're hearing a lot about collagen, you know, a lot of people take collagen. That's another way of healing the gut lining, um, the bone broths, things like that. So those are all common things that we can use to help repair that brick and mortar so that right. you don't have right. that leakiness anymore. And, you know, so everything that you're saying, for those of you that are listening, it's amazing and fascinating. And then at the same time, for that average person like me, it's like overwhelming. It feels complicated. And, and so some of the things that I struggled with Derek's health and my own health being under all the years of like extreme stress was that we were piecemealing. And when I met Michelle several years ago and she was helping me with Derek, I, she was the one that had taught me about this gut health. And you were piecemealing different strains of bacteria from all around really the world. And it was complicated. And you were trying to uncomplicate it, but it was complicated. Yeah. And what's been so beautiful is that we found something that was all inclusive. It really, really focused on gut health and mental wellness. And it literally took that patient overload of going, I have to learn and become an, like, I have to know all these herbs and know all these like crazy things from around the world that I can't even pronounce to, mm -hmm. I can actually get it all where I need it and have a program written out for yeah. you to say, eat these foods and don't eat these foods. And it just simplified everything. And so, Michelle, you've brought this program into your office. You've been using it with your patients. And you've had over a year of experience with it. And can you just share, how is this affecting your autoimmune patients? Tell us about what that looks like. So it's actually, it's great because it's been so easy to incorporate, you know, where you know, as before, I was literally like throwing stuff at Derek, like, here, take this and this. <laughs> But it gets really overwhelming for your your standard patient or person because they're like, I just I can't I forget to take something or you know I I you can't and it's expensive it. and it's very expensive. It's expensive. I mean, I literally people would walk out spending like eight hundred dollars and I would feel bad because I'm like that's yeah. not I mean that that's that not most people can afford to spend eight hundred dollars on supplements right. and, you know so I. When I saw Amari and, and all, literally every single ingredient in their product was exactly my four hour program. I'm like, this is easy. And the cleanliness and the quality and everything about it. I was like, done, sold, I'm doing it. And what I'm seeing, it's amazing. I mean, I've got my own story, which we'll do another, another uh, thing on Hashimoto at one point, but, um, I've actually, I'm in remission of my autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto thyroiditis. And um, I've been able to completely put myself into remission and just using Amare. That's the only thing that I've added. So I know it's that. I can't, I've not added anything else. All I've done is the B3 program and the fundamentals and that's it. And a little bit of mood. And Michelle, I just have to say, for those of you that are seeing her for the first time, I mean, she's beautiful. But Michelle, you look amazing. Like I have watched this transformation of you in the past year and and that's what i i love because you you were also a patient you right. were your own patient <laughs> yeah right I've but that's what we learned yeah i've lost 20 pounds since november 
And I, and I literally, all I do is the B3, like three times a week, I'll do a little bit of, you know, 30 minutes of exercise. And I honestly feel like just by healing my microbiome, I've been able to make such changes. And I share this with all my patients because I am a patient too, you know, and I, and when they see, and I get patients in here, they're like, what did you do? Oh my gosh, you're disappearing. And I'm like, I've got help. That's it. And they all know my story because I see so much thyroid disease here. Um, a lot of people come to me for thyroid because they know that I have struggled with it and I do my own treatments for it. So, I mean, it's been amazing and it's done wonders for my mood, for my sleep. I mean, everything. I used to have this chronic inflammation in my hip that it would bug me literally day in and day out and it's gone. Like I totally forgot about it. Um, but my patients are sharing very similar stories, weight loss, reversal of antibodies, which is how we test for autoimmune disease, um, inflammation going down. Because when you, if you think about it, when you start to decrease inflammation, that's a lot of it is related to your weight, right? right. Because right. inflammation makes you retain water. It right. makes you puffy. You, if, you're, if you've got inflammation in your gut, you're gonna get that Buddha belly, you know, that puffiness. Um, and you may not necessarily have gas and belching and all that stuff, it's just, you literally look pregnant. And right. You're like, what is going on? And it's like, it's inflamed. Well, think about it. You got two tennis courts long of this tube shoved inside of there. And now you have inflammation. Of course, you're going to look like a pregnant person. Right. right. So I'll, we've seen people get off of all their like, and, you know, leaves and, and uh, anti-acids. And I, I mean, I'm, we're constantly working with people to get them off of these drugs because they're not an answer. It's just a quick fix, it's a Band-Aid, and there's other ways. And so why be on something for the rest of your life that's causing you more issues, and then eventually you'll be on another drug to help heal right. the side effect of the first drug, you know? Right. Again, I think drugs are necessary for specific reasons, but I don't think it should be like, you know, a stamp to the patient that comes in and say, okay, you're gonna be on this for the rest of your life now, because that's not true. There are other ways and there's ways to heal from the inside out. I, Michelle, I cannot thank you enough. I, this is everyone. This is why I love this woman so much because she has a true, a true doctor servant's heart for the patient. And I think that more and more, I mean, doctors aren't, you didn't learn nutrition in school. You had to go back to school to learn all of this, didn't you? I mean, yeah. you had to like continue and further your educa education, spend a lot of time and a lot of money yeah. to be able to go and figure out how can I heal the root? versus right. just band-aiding the root. Yeah. And, and God bless you for it because you are serving so many patients, Michelle, and including my husband and my own whole family. And I'm so excited to just share this with others. So listen, if you have any of these symptoms that Michelle is talking about and you're trying everything, or maybe you didn't even know that maybe you have an autoimmune disease, but these symptoms are like registering with you. Listen, reach out to me, reach out to the person that shared this. I know this has been going crazy, Michelle. I, this has been shared so many times already. Um, so I'm, I'm sure we've got thousands already watching this, but listen, reach out to the person that shared this with you and we have programs in place and, and I want to leave everyone with this. The hardest thing I watched all the clinics and all the doctors my husband would see is that we would have one 15 minute appointment or one 20 minute doctor's appointment and then boom, we were shoved home. And then, you know, we were left with the everyday life and we didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And that's not true anymore. We have a plan for you to follow. Yeah. All you have to do is just reach out and ask for help and try the plan. You have nothing to lose. But what if everything this beautiful woman just said is actually true? And it is true. And what if, if you made just a few changes, um, what if it added massive quality to your life? And yeah. I think that's, that, that's what we want to give you hope and serve all of you. So Michelle, thank you. Thank you. So much. So and, listen, hope. and I always tell yeah. people, like, if your doctor is telling you that there's no hope and there's no answer, you need to find a new doctor. Because Amen. You need to be on your page with you and there to guide you and support you. And yes, I run into very difficult cases. And yes, I get very difficult patients, but I'm never going to just put a stamp on them and tell them, sorry, like, see you later. You know, obviously, if it's out of my scope of practice, I'm going to send them to somebody who I know can support them and help them. 
But I think it's so important to surround yourself with people that are going to help guide you in the right direction, but also be a support system for you and a hope system for you. Because when you've given up hope, there's if you've got people surrounding you and you've got your tribe that's going to keep your hope alive, that's so important. Because if you don't believe, they're going to believe for you and they're going to push you through it. So. And I will say this from personal experience. I cannot tell you how many times I reached out to this woman. When we were in our insurance network up here in the Midwest and door after door slammed on my husband in the medical community. And I would call her and she was relentless. She would not allow me. She would just go open another door and she would go open another door. And I love that you are actually a physician telling this to everyone because she's so right. And there's a lot of great doctors up in the Midwest. I'm not like dissing them, but listen, there, yeah. there's doctors everywhere that you know, are just so close-minded that they're not staying open-minded or they just haven't simply been taught and they're overloaded and they, they're not taking the time to look. And so it's important that, listen, if that's, that's who they are, you can't settle for that. Right. And I think that's the thing is there is hope for you. And it is a very lonely place when you don't feel good and you don't know what else to do. So Michelle, thank you so much. I, I, will, for, I will know you for the rest of my life and you'll be a sister for the rest of my life. So thanks everybody. Thanks for your Bye. time. Bye-bye.